yeah, we had this bug where things just weren't like things weren't um, behaving well when we were deleting like uh, entities. So I want to fix that because it's a little bit annoying and I had a quick look at it last night and I couldn't solve it. So I think this will be interesting to turn into a little bit of a video or a stream or something like that. Um, yeah, I'm going to just light my little contraption. For those of you who don't know, I have this lovely like frying, like cast iron skillet style frying pan with like a tea light underneath it and then there's like some stuff that it's melting. Just gonna go ahead and introduce that to the stream. Uh, so I gotta light that. So I'll be back. I managed to create some fire. It's lit. It's gonna... It's gonna fry nicely. And we're gonna get on with some... Some nice... Duck hunting. I mean bug hunting. So... Um, as I mentioned, I actually have no idea why this is happening. And I wasn't lying. Uh, this isn't gonna be like one of those fake little I have no idea what's going on, but really it's just all a show. No, unfortunately I wish that was the case because that would make my life easier, but no, I actually don't know what's happening. So um, Basically, this is the bug. I'll show you guys the bug so that you're you're aware of the bug But basically the bug is uh, every time I say the bug by the way you have to take a shot of um, Of orange juice because this is a PG stream, right? so um, yeah, so basically the problem is that if we try and delete sponsor, there's actually a few bugs. Like, for example, sometimes I can't click on stuff here, sometimes stuff just disappears. This scene hierarchy panel has a few bugs happening, which is a bit annoying. But anyway, like, look at this. I can't even select this. What's going on? This is what happens when our audio guy decides to do UI. If I delete this sponsor model, as you can see, it does not get deleted. It's gone from here, but, like, what is this stuff? It's suddenly gotten bigger, possibly because it's been like unparented or something. And like the thing is, it's kind of weird because it's still like an entity. I can move it and stuff. Uh, it's obviously being rendered. It looks like it should be a real thing. And I mean, more so if I click on it to like select it, you can see it is actually appearing here. So the thing is, um, it's, it seems to be like still in the entity component system. And it still seems to be like a valid entity and everything. It's just not showing up in the scene hierarchy panel. Why isn't it showing up in the scene hierarchy panel? Well, the way that we actually show entities in this panel here is kind of dependent on like the, where they are in terms of their own personal hierarchy of like parents and children and all that stuff. So if they have no valid parent, then as far as I know, I think they're not gonna show up in the hierarchy. So clearly deleting that sponsor entity has in fact left some orphans here but they are, I don't know why they exist. So there's a few few things I wanna do to kind of take a look at this, right? The first thing is, I don't like the idea of not knowing what's going on. I think that when you're, you know, programming and when you're doing all of this, when you're setting up like complex things like game engines, it's always really nice to write some tools for yourself so that you can actually see what's going on at all times. That's kind of important. And so that's what I'm gonna do. My pillow fell over. That's all right, it's not visible on stream anyway, so it doesn't matter. So. Basically, what I want to do is I want to make a new kind of panel. I want to make a new kind of, I want to make like a debug kind of entity component system panel type deal. Uh, and the purpose of this is just to dump like literally just raw entity information because clearly something is surviving and I want to be able to inspect it as best as I can. So this shouldn't take very long. Uh, I'm just going to go over here. I've moved my solution explorer to that side because I think it's less useful than the code to look at. I'm just making some new files, no big deal. So we're going to call this like ECS panel because it's just going to, this is just for like kind of for debug and it's just going to be a way for us to, I have to like move this a bit, um, for us to be able to just dump some info. So let's go ahead and namespace Hazelis, namespace Hazel. Class ECS panel. Um, we don't really need to do much, so I will add a like a scene as like a context, so that we can see what's up. I don't think we really need that on. I'm GUI render. We'll open and we'll obviously keep track of that context. And maybe like a set context would also be appropriate in case we switch scenes to the runtime or whatever. All right. 
So let's quickly make all of this stuff. Doing some speed running programming here. Um, context, context. We'll have no destructor for now. And on I'm GUI render. So I am GUI begin. ECS. So we'll, I guess we'll call this ECS like debug or something. ECS debug panel maybe. Uh, and then we're going to type in open like that. This is just so that we can close it. And then if it's, if open is false, then we just return. This is just a way for us to show the panel and not show the panel if we don't want to. Include Hazel UI, I am, or Hazel I am GUI, I am GUI. All right, and set context. Um, this will, this can just be implemented here. Context, context. Uh, call this context. <coughs> I had three eggs. We already talked about that. Keep up. So let's see. So we've got this panel. That's good. So yeah. So basically, what I want to do here is copy kind of what the scene hierarchy panel is doing because it's it's doing all. It's like rendering all the entities. But I'm, the thing is, this is not going to be a hierarchy, and that's kind of the point. I want to just see the raw view of everything. Obviously, everything is kind of a flat list. It's not really a hierarchy. That doesn't make much sense. Well, no. I mean, I I guess theoretically it could be, but it's not, right? Because entity component systems store like just components as like just arrays. So there's no hierarchy. There's no like linked list or some kind of actual tree data structure. It's just a list. It's just like a vector. So if we take a look at like, um, yeah, I guess on I'm GUI render, and then we take a look at the scene hierarchy and context. And then what does it do? There's a whole bunch of I'm GUI code here, but eventually we go through this and you can see we kind of go through the registry and we just view all of this stuff. But I actually want to, a better place to start might be the serializer because the serializer actually like takes a look at, um, it just actually, you know, iterates through every component because it has to serialize it or every uh, entity rather. So where does it do that? So serialize, serialize. And then you can see it goes through every ID component. So it's almost perfect. It doesn't go through every component because what if a component, what if something is missing an ID component? Very unlikely. And I don't think it's happening here, but still kind of possible, I guess, but whatever. So. First of all, we have to add um, this ECS panel as a friend class because the registry is private. And then if we come over here, let's just go ahead and go through this. So M context. So if context, just in case it's null, in which case the panel will be, will be blank. We're going to go through this. Okay, so now we have every single entity. So what I want to do now is very simple. I want to just list it. I want to just have a list of these things for now. Now we could have some kind of like table or whatever. I don't really want to do any of that. I just kind of want a selectable list of things. Now, um, now for the selectable list situation, we could have tree. I guess there's something called I am GUI selectable, which you can use. This is probably a good time to use it. So let's try and get like a uh, const auto name from it, which will be entity. So let's make actually we'll call this like E and we'll do entity uh, entity equals E and M context dot raw. Because I think this wants this uses a pointer, raw pointer, just because it's, we could have used a weak ref now that we have weak references, but <coughs> um, it just uses raw because it's, it's not taking ownership of it. It shouldn't be keeping it alive. It's just like a way to access it. So entity dot get, uh, can we just do get name? So we can't do name. So I'm just gonna, whoops, accidental Russian as usual. Uh, so we don't have name. So I want to get the name, right? So. Let's go ahead and just do const auto, sorry, const city string name. Uh, that'll be the const version and that will be uh, scene registry get uh, tag component dot tag. Why are you upset? Whatever, we'll, we'll figure out why. It's because it needs this. And then we'll have a non-const version as well case we want to modify it. Now, I don't know if entities are guaranteed to have a tag component. That's kind of the issue. And maybe that's why it's not like, might not be a good idea to do. I don't know though. Entities, do they have to have a tag component? Well, 
possibly, like, yeah, I guess yes. Because when we create an entity, I'm pretty sure it always, like, adds a, adds a tag component to it. No, well, actually, create child entity, if it doesn't have a tag component, if it doesn't have a name, in this case, it doesn't actually add a tag component. So it's possible it doesn't have a tag component. So let's do this for name. Um, let's just make a static, uh, an inline static std string, uh, no name, um, which will make uh, no name equals null. I don't know, null's a bit weird, but whatever. Null, yeah, because it's not null, it's just unnamed. Let's just do unnamed. And then what the, the reason for this is that we can expand this name to be a bit, a bit better now. So we can do like, uh, has component, I don't know why I'm using this to be honest, this is lame. So has component, uh, tag component. So if it has component, tag component, then we return get component, tag component dot name, or dot tag. Otherwise we return no name. Cause it returns a reference. So we need to return something valid. And yeah, we'll do the same thing here, but obviously it will be const. All right, brilliant. So, going back to ECS uh, panel, now we can do entity name, which is fantastic. So now we've got the name, name dot C string, uh, and I mean, bull selected. Like for now, we won't be able to select them, I guess, but it would be better to select them in some form. So we probably have to have like an array of oh no, wool. We'll select it. So this will have an index and we can just keep track of the, the selected entity, I assume. So let's just do like entity selected entity. That should be a, an invalid entity by default. Um, so I think the way that we, uh, well, bool selected is gonna equal m selected entity equals entity. So in that case, it's selected. Now uh, we do have to give it this because if we decide that it's now selected, right? So if, I guess if that, then selected, but I don't really want it to be, because it will set selected to be that. And then what are these selected flags anyway? Disabled, allow double click. Yeah, I don't care about any of this. Um, so we'll just do zero or whatever. And then there's a size, which I also don't care about. So if it's selected, then we'll just do this. Like we don't really have to, we don't have to worry about the Boolean being written to. So this just lets us select it, right? It's pretty simple. And then I don't like, we can't really deselect it at the moment, but I don't care about that either. So we should now be listing all of these names. So this is fine, but like, um, I kind of want to add a little bit more information to this. So like, I want to have the good as well. So let's just do STD string like uh, label, and then we'll make this FMT format. So we'll do the name and then maybe the ID. So name and uh, entity get UUID. And then this label is what we'll actually use here. Okay, so going back to entity uh, editor layer, that's what I meant. Going back to editor layer, let's um, go to where are all of my panels? There's so much stuff here that needs to be cleaned up. Optimization October, where are you? <laughs> so asset manager panel open. Let's do like um, ECS panel open. And then I guess, like this is lame though. Where's like the scene hierarchy panel? Where's everything? At the moment we're a little bit all over the place because we can't like even close these things, but this is like a bunch of panels. So I guess I'll just make it here. Um, and then we can make it a scope, sure. It doesn't really matter. ECS panel. I have to include that. So ECS panel, we'll call this ECS panel. I'll call it ECS debug panel because it really should only be used for debugging, like just what we're doing now. Yeah, so see, there's a lot of set context stuff that needs to happen. So I guess we'll kind of follow along with this. Um, and we'll just duplicate the scene hierarchy panel. Except, yeah, we can pass in uh, ECS debug panel, ECS panel open. Maybe I'll just rename that to debug panel. 
Uh, set selected, we don't care about. <coughs> I guess it would be nice to select it in there though. Yeah, that would probably be nice. Let's do that actually. So we'll add a set selected. Which doesn't exist yet, obviously, but um, this means that we can actually mouse pick it. So, uh, but we won't let it pick us, probably. Maybe, we could do that though. We could try and click on it and then it was selected and that would be kind of cool. But I won't, I probably won't bother with that for now. So set context to runtime scene. Okay, good. So I'm just making sure that they're both there basically. Okay, so set selected isn't a thing, ECS uh, panel. So what we'll do is we'll have a void set selected. Uh, and then this is pretty simple. Uh, this just takes in an entity, I think, right? And then it just sets m selected entity to entity. And that's probably it. And then that should obviously reflect here. So let's see what we've created. <laughs> now, oh, there's no way to open the panel actually. So back in editor layer, let's go to view. So we have like a view menu. Uh, begin menu view, right? And then we can do like, um, I might add like a little separator because these are like debug panels. Well, so is asset manager though. Ah, whatever. Um, ECS debug. Did we give it a title? Yeah, ACS debug. Sweet, let's take a look. So this is coming along nicely for those of you uh, playing along. Um, it's uh, mostly melted now. Mm, it smells amazing. It's a pity that I can't show you guys what it smells like, but you're gonna have to take my word for it. First time catching the stream, your boy Narchin. How's it going? What are we doing today? We're solving some bugs, We're bug hunting. Uh, we've got a weird bug where sometimes when I delete like a whole uh, like cluster of entities. What's with this? Like, I swear it was, did not take this long yesterday because we're in debug, so we're running a bit slowly. But anyway, sometimes when we delete stuff, it doesn't delete all of it and it seems to like do weird things. And I have a feeling I know why, but I'm also taking this as an opportunity to get, to get my, uh, my crap together. <laughs> if we take a look at sponsor. So this is the, what I'm talking about. So if we go view and ECS debug, apparently it's true already. Why is it true? I thought it was false by default. Oh, I can't even uncheck it for some reason. What? Oh, lol. Open. <laughs> that was weird. <laughs> so we were, um, yeah, we were setting the actual like pointer into the, into the thing. So of course it's always true. And um, by changing it, I don't know. I guess we weren't changing it very well. I don't know what was going on there. A little bit weird. Cause you're supposed to pass in a Boolean, which is like one byte. And we were passing in like a eight byte pointer. So it was probably scrolling with the pointer when we were checking it, but it was true because of course it wasn't zero anyway. So if we now do ECS debug, oh, haha. So you can see we have like all of our entities listed out here, which is pretty cool. That's exactly what I wanted. So let's just kind of dock this over here. And I'm gonna open up that other scene, which should trigger a, yep, so it's changed as you can see. It's just loading the meshes and stuff in the meantime, but it's already loaded the scene hierarchy, which is cool. So this is like a flat list of all of the entities that we have in our scene, right? I might just try and uh, make it a little bit more visible for you peeps. Just lining that up with the face cam. So we have, um, we have all of these entities, right? And uh, we should even be able to, it's hard to see because the highlight color sucks, but when I'm clicking on this, you can see it's actually selecting them here. It's almost more visible on stream. Um, so, uh, but I can't, if I click, it doesn't select them here. But if I select something over here, uh, okay, it doesn't work if I select it in the scene hierarchy panel, but if I click on something in the viewport, it selects it here, which is pretty cool. So the idea is, right, what I'm doing is I'm deleting this, but clearly they're not all being deleted. So let's see what happens. This contains 25 different entities, right? So obviously I'd expect like 25 of these to disappear but they're not disappearing. But anyway, so let's try and delete sponsor. Oof. See, we we did delete some, but look how many are left and we can't see any of them here. So see, this is nice as like a debug feature because we've already given ourselves the ability to be able to see what is actually going on. As a programmer, I want to be aware of the data because the data is everything. So here is the data and we can see that we still have these. So they didn't get deleted properly. I don't know why though. Um, it's very strange because I think another thing I was doing uh, was I was actually like logging 
Um, it's like impossible to bring up the taskbar sometimes. Uh, yeah, so... No, this is rubbish. I was logging something else. I was logging like all them being deleted. Let's go ahead and... Okay, I want to do a couple of things actually. I want to make sponsor the startup project. So let me just find like the HProj and we'll make... Uh, scenes sponsor demo, I think. We'll make that the startup scene. And then if I go into... Scene. Let's go ahead and try to figure out what's going on. So this is the this is the function of this is the function that we're that we're trying to fix, right? So we destroy entity, and it, clearly its goal is to destroy uh, entities. And we have the ability to exclude children, which we're not doing, right? So we're issuing a command to destroy entities. This is happening from I think uh, the scene hierarchy panel. No. It's ha well, yes, but it's happening from... I'm not sure why it's not popping up. Can I... From all projects, references from all projects. So here it is. So edit a layer, destroy entity. This is where it's happening. So... This is the command that's destroying it. This is when we hit the delete key. So it's passing it in with exclude children as false, meaning that children are included. And then what it's doing is a uh, bunch of stuff that we don't care about. I, my, my, con my biggest concern here is that something is uh, messing with this list because we're iterating through this list and we're recursively deleting all of this stuff. But the thing is, if this is messing with the list, then, you know, you have to be careful with for each loops because if within the for each loop, if you're modifying the iterator that you're using, it's very bad. And most languages like Java and C Sharp will actually throw like concurrent modification exceptions or something like that. Maybe not concurrent because that implies kind of multi-threading, but uh, it'll they'll have some kind of exceptions that they throw because like, hey man, you can't do this. If you have a regular for loop, it's fine usually because you just have like an index and you're just accessing it by index. But this can invalidate the iterator if you modify this. Now the simplest way to prove that case, because that's kind of like my first uh, my first guess is what I could do is copy the list. Because if I copy the list, then it doesn't matter what I'm doing anymore, you know? I have a copy of it, I can use one copy to iterate over it, and another copy to modify. So again, I don't know I don't know if this is the solution. Like, well, first of all, copying is obviously we want to avoid that if we can, but these are just UUIDs, it's not the biggest deal in the world, and this is a delete function, which we call like, well, I mean, throughout gameplay, I guess you could be destroying entities all the time, but, at the moment, it's just like we're hitting the delete key and that's it. So let's just see, we're gonna use this as like a test. So auto children equals entity children. I'm just copying this. What is this? As I mentioned, a vector of UUIDs. So we're copying our children. Let's iterate through this copied list, right? So the, the deal is uh, when this actually destroys it, it might, be, it might be modifying this children list or something might be happening, but it's not gonna be modifying our copy because it can't. So let's just see if that does anything. I'm not sure that it will because I don't really see any code. I mean, we have remove child. Ah, oh, remove child does remove something, right? So it is clearly erasing something. So it's possible that remove child is messing with it. Actually, that would make sense. Okay, never mind. This is beginning to seem likely. So let's let's see if this is actually the cause of this. You guys can't see that, but she's just she's just chilling, like Alivka. You're sitting on my speaker. What do you want attention again? Gladys, Alivka. She's so she's so needy lately. Needs her cherno time, don't we all? So let's try delete this. So I'll bring up that uh, ECS debug panel again. Let's try delete sponsor. Oh my gosh, they're all gone. Solved. Okay. So moral of the story is: be careful when you have. Uh, vectors like this, right? And you and you're actually like within the for loop that you're for reaching over. You're modifying this itself. Again, it's not that apparent because this is like a whole recursive hierarchy thing. But it's very possible, obviously, that somewhere within this, in this case, it was actually over here. But the thing is, this only happens for the first iteration, which is then false. So within this for loop, technically, we shouldn't be doing this. So I'm not 100% sure where this happens. It's possible that registry destroy, which is actually an ant function, maybe within this somewhere, it calls like some kind of callback and then that callback removes it. 
But overall, it's very strange. Let, let's kind of try and rep, let, let's try and hunt this down a bit more. So if I go to uh, and find it by you, Eddie. Okay, let, let's go to destroy. Let's go to remove child because we know that modifies the vector. We can see that it's erasing the children. And well, I mean, even set parent does that, but like. This doesn't make sense, because again, it does this at the very end, and it does this for the first time, so I'm not sure, unless it's being indirectly called from somewhere else. Let's just try that again. I shouldn't have closed it, because then I could just load it again. But yeah, I don't know. Bit weird. Oh, to be a cat and be chilling on a massive speaker. That's funny. Yeah, cats love my massive speakers. It's just a cat's name in Russian with a little cute smile. <laughs> yep. Well, yeah, Olivka. He wrote Olivka. That's my cat's name. Olive. But, like, it sounds better in Russian. And I talk to her in Russian because, I mean, who wouldn't, right? Uh, so, if we bring this back up, um, well, it doesn't really matter. But, like, if I try and delete this, let's see if that remove child... See, it doesn't even happen anywhere, man. So, what is modifying it? Something is modifying it, but it's not this. So it's not remove child. What what else modifies this children list? And actually like modifies it though. Well, the other thing is, I guess find entity by UUID also has to iterate through. No, that doesn't really iterate through children though. This is such a weird case, right? Because I don't know what is modifying this list, but clearly us making a copy fixed it. So that makes me think that, yeah, something was in fact modifying the list. And there's no like race conditions here. This is all single thread, like all of this work. So it's, it's, and it was definitely reproducible 100% of the time. So this isn't some weird thing that's happened. This is actually like something weird is going on. And it's like within like a few functions here. Again, I might, my, my guess is something to do with this, but uh, but I'm not sure that it is, because, like, this is the loop that is recursive. So, destroy entity calls itself, and then it goes through everything, right? And it's not going to have any children in this case. Uh, this will be false, so it shouldn't be doing a remove child. And all it's really doing is this, I think. Um, and it doesn't do... It doesn't do remove child because the entity itself gets deleted, but this removes itself from parent if it has a parent but it didn't even have a parent so it's all very strange like I, I legitimately don't know what is happening <laughs> on script component destroyed that doesn't shouldn't do anything with children is edit a scene so that's um, uh, this is if it's the runtime so if it's the runtime we also have to remove it from physics uh, but then there's this thing, child ID. Because like the second, so we're iterating through this, we have a child ID, we're inside of this iterator, and then we come here and then we go through everything again, and then we get the iterator again. But the thing is, none of this should be removing it as a, like from the children list, right? I mean, we can also, I guess we can also put a breakpoint into here. I mean, this happens all the time, though, unfortunately. Okay, let's let's um, put a breakpoint here. Let's go back to Hazel. I'll reload that scene. So now we get Sponsor back, and we have all of our entities. And now let's just delete, like, this. That will trigger this breakpoint. And now I'm going to go to this children vector, and then put a breakpoint there, and see what's causing that. So, yeah, so destroy entity gets it from here. Yes. And then, yeah, it gets it from there again. And it's always getting it from that line. Line 15, 26, which is this. So as far as I can tell, that's the only thing that's getting it. And, and like, I mean, it shouldn't the iterator itself should be fine because it's not modifying it. It's only reading it, right? Like, it's never removing children because that actually happens at the end. 
like all in one go, kind of. Oh, hang on. Hang on. Here's a lambda. Ah, oh, that's the scene hierarchy panel. Oh, so we've deleted everything now. I think we're done. Yeah, we're done. We just deleted everything. Okay, let's let's quickly go, go back to what we had. And I want to like... Let's just do hz core one child count. So we'll see if this progressively gets smaller because my guess is this should always be either zero or 25 until like the very end. So let's take a look at that. Because again, my suspicion still is that something somewhere is probably removing it. Like that's kind of the only explanation that I have. Unless I'm just again wrong, and I mean I'm 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 wrong like 51% <laughs> of the time. So you've upgraded to the computer, Alifka. Alifka's upgraded to the computer. She can barely barely see, but but she's there. All right, we're back. Um, so <laughs> oh, we've already got a sponsor. Look at me opening it like a fool. So, uh, yeah. So we expect this not to work, and as you can see, it hasn't deleted everything. So, um, so why hasn't it worked? Let's go to here. Where's the delete? Where did the delete happen? Here. Child count one twenty five, and all of these are zeros. Yes. Okay, that's not... I didn't exactly do what I wanted, though. Let's, um... I guess what I wanted to do is, within here, I want to just verify that my size is legit. Because that, cause that did it, like... It said zero because all of the... All of the children with no children... So, all of the kind of, um... Leaf nodes. They obviously don't have anything, so that's fine. But... Yeah. Log size of children in the loop. Yep, that's what I'm doing. Sorry, I haven't been reading chat too much because I've been too focused. Man, this startup time though in debug. I, I, I don't know. I was debugging this last night. I was running it in debug mode, same as now, but it was way faster. So it's weird. I mean, now it's also loading spawns, I guess. Whereas before it was loading that other thing. But still, that this uh, startup time is a bit depressing. We can compare it to release mode in a minute because that's like a couple seconds. Keep trying to load sponsor. Um, let's delete this, and I should stop the whole rendering entities. I keep rendering. I was just logging how many meshes I was actually rendering, but yeah. So yeah, so it's a consistent twenty-five. The one is because, um, the one is because of this, because sponsor has one child, which is node zero, just because it happens to be like an extra parent in the hierarchy in the actual in the actual FBX file. But then here they are, so it's always twenty-five. So what gives? Why is it just not deleting everything? Or well, why are these still here? And why... Why are they still here? And why does this fix it? Like making it a... Making it a co making a copy of it fix it. The only way that makes any sense is if something modifies children. But nothing seems to be modifying children. Okay, new plan. New plan, let's make this a for loop instead of a for each loop, right? So I'll make this for uh, int i equals zero, or let's, let's do it properly, size t i equals zero, i is less than, uh, we'll get, well, we'll leave that copy there, but we won't use it. Size i plus plus, and then we'll do auto, well, this is the child id, child, We'll just replicate it perfectly. So we'll do child ID equals that. And then that's the thing. So same exact thing, but it's a, it's a, it's a regular for loop. Why, why is this different? Because we're just keeping track of an index now and it's not dependent. It's not like an iterator. And that, that is an important distinction. <laughs> what if you run the for loop backwards? That's a interesting concept. All right, so let's delete this with the ECS debug panel up. Oh, it worked. Excuse me, but apparently, like, for each loops are just broken. Is there, like, some kind of weird thing where you can't iterate? You can't get a for each loop within a for each loop? Is that a thing? 
Like, is that actually a thing in C++? Am I not supposed to have a for each loop inside a for each loop? Because, I mean, I, well, the thing is it worked when I copy it though. Oh, but every step of the way copies it. Like a nested for each loop, I'm almost certain it's okay. Well, yeah, I mean, I've never run into this before, but that, that seems to be like the, like why is this broken if it's a for each loop? Like if, if it's a range based for loop. So what was it? Auto child ID and to see children like this. I mean, I am retrieving it every time, but that's okay. Oh, hang on. Ooh, maybe I figured it out, guys. Maybe I figured it out. I think what might be happening is I'm I'm removing entities from ant. Yeah. And I, since I'm removing entities from ant, the component memory might be changing. And so this might be pointing towards something, like it's not necessarily fixed in memory, this thing. Obviously when I do this, I'm retrieving it every time. Like I'm, re I'm calling get component every time, but if it's in a for each loop like this as, a, as an iterator, it's possible that it's not doing that. I'm not even sure how I would test that. I mean, I, I could get the memory address of it and see if it's changing, I guess. So let's try that. So memory address, and then we'll just get, whoops, this. Let's, let's check this out. This is possible, actually, because I'm sure ent, or entity, the lab, the entity component system, does some housekeeping, possibly. And it could be shifting components in memory as they get deleted. Why don't you just use the normal for loop? Well, I'm happy to. I just want to find out why this is happening. I'm not satisfied with just being like, yeah, okay, I guess I guess that's just how it works. Because there's, there's, there needs to be an explanation for it, you know? As a computer scientist, I'm very much interested in what's going on. All right, so that seems to have worked. Uh, so that worked, yeah, that's fine, because I'm, I was using a regular for loop, but let's take a look at, I should stop printing this garbage. Let's take a look at uh, the memory address. This one's different, but we expect that one to be different. Oh, no. It's not the same. Look how many times it changes. There should be three of these. Right? No, wait. Wait, why? Hold on. Okay, I know I know a way to test it for sure. This is how we're going to test it. The this is how we're going to test it. So, what we expect is uh, that what we expect, let's just add a little level here. So int level equals zero. Um, and I'll see why I'm doing this now. I, I wanna see what level, because the, the thing is at one given level, if we're iterating over it, it should never change memory address, right? Because obviously this is a recursive thing, which means that we go deeper and deeper into it. But then obviously if we've stepped into this function again, the children that it retrieves is for this entity. So it is a different set of children. So of course it will be a different memory address. What we are testing for is that within the one for loop, this has to be identical, this memory address. If it's not, then yeah. So the reason we use this level thing is because we're going to add level plus one every time we step in recursively. And that way we'll just see like what level we're at and all of that stuff. So um, what we'll do is let's just do like, uh, L and then I'll write the level here and then uh, we'll just do address that So we would expect the same address For the same level if they're different levels, then that's fine if they have different addresses Obviously, they, in fact, they they will have different address. They need to have different addresses because otherwise it doesn't make any sense So that's my hypothesis. Let's test it out. Alivka's gone Alivka Nah, she's outie. She's had enough of my C++ debugging. Right, if we bring up, uh, unfortunately I'm still 
printing this, but let's try and delete this now. And then we go back. And then again, remember, we're looking for same address, different levels. Or rather, ooh, interesting. So level zero, we have a, one address. And then this, you can see the address is constant until it's not. And we are still at level one. We only move on to, in fact, we don't even have a level two. Why don't we have a level two? Oh, because we don't have a level two because they don't have any children, right? So these are all leaf nodes. So that's why we have two levels. You can see guys that halfway through this, over here, the address changes. This is within the one for loop. And then it changes again. So ent actually shifts this vector in memory twice during this iteration thing. That's why it doesn't work. However, why our solution works for a number of reasons is because if we actually were to copy this, like we just did, if we now look at the memory address of this child vector, then it will 100% be the same. It will not change because we've made a copy of it. And remember, none of the, we're not modifying that vector. It's just the physical vector in memory is moving. We're not modifying the vector at all. It remains size 25 the whole way through. Yeah, we've we actually tested that earlier, but also I know it's not doing that because nothing's removing anything and nothing's clearing the vector. It gets cleared at the very end. Well, it doesn't really get cleared. The whole entity actually gets deleted from memory along with all of its components and that vector is inside a component. So that's what's happening. So now if we take a look at this again, delete it and uh, go back to this quickly. <laughs> I need to stop printing this. Um, let's find it. Then check this out. This is the difference. So see now level zero has a different vector memory address, but then level one has the same address the whole way through all 25 entities. That's why it worked. Okay. That's why it worked when we made it, when we made a copy of it. So it wasn't because we were modifying the vector. We weren't. It's because the vector was being moved in memory. And we had that one memory address reference. So if we use a for each loop, it doesn't work. So how do we fix it? Well, use a, a normal for loop. Why? Because every time we use a normal for loop, it calls dot children. Yeah. So this has a constant size of 25, which is fine. We don't care. That's not going to change ever. That's fine. It's safe to retrieve it like this. But then this, this little blob over here, we get it each iteration. And since we get it each iteration, we get the most up-to-date memory address because going through this code, obviously, it looks up the component inside the registry, inside the entity component system. Okay, so that's a bit of a tricky bug. Definitely a bit of a tricky bug. I think I might make a YouTube video out of it. So you guys should say hi to YouTube right now. But um, yeah, this is, this is definitely a YouTube worthy stream, I think it's probably quite uh, satisfying and interesting to figure out the, the, the bug. But uh, yeah, Moral of the story, be careful with your memory. Always think about the memory because always think about the data because the data is coming from the memory. And obviously if that moves, then like there's a, a whole kind of situation, right? So it's important to kind of be aware of that, I guess. So yeah, that's the solution. I'm going to leave a note here. Note, don't make, don't make an engine. 